Hello fellow learners, today I'm here with another clip on how to compute singular value decomposition which we have shortened as what SVD. We'll be looking at a simple example in this lesson and the subsequent ones we'll look at various forms of uh, matrices and how to tackle them. So let's get into it. So we have this matrix A here and we are to find our U which is an orthogonal matrix with autonomous basis and our V, our sigma, which is also a matrix which takes the same form as the original matrix but has the diagonals for with what the singular values and our V also an orthogonal matrix with autonomous basis. So we have our original matrix A here. The transpose can be seen as here. So the A transpose trans A times A will give us this matrix here. So from there, we went ahead to find the determinants of the matrix, which we have seen in the equation one. And then <coughs> we, we proceed to find the characteristics polynomial, which we have seen it in equation three. And from here, when it comes to equation four, if you, if, if you perform factorization, we'll be getting the equation four. From equation four, we equate the whole thing to the whole equation to zero, and then it gives us our singular, our eigenvalues, values, which is lambda one, lambda two, and our lambda one is the same as what the sigma one square. That's the first singular value square, and then our lambda two is the same as what the second second singular value square which is nine and four respectively so we have seen it here nicely when you find the square root of lambda one lambda two we are able to get our singular values so like i've already said we to obtain our our sigma i mean the big the, the, the bigger sigma <laughs> we we, we the diagonals we replace the, the zeros in the diagonals with the singular values as we have seen nicely here so from there we now go ahead to look at how best can we find our matrix v so we have the matrix a here which the a is waiting in terms of this and our a transposes the whole of this and our original a is as this one so if you multiply we getting what if we expand this one, we'll be getting equation 11. From equation 11, we know U transpose and U are orthogonal matrix, orthogonal matrices. So it will give us an identity. So that's why we don't see the U again. And our sigma, T and then sigma will give, will give us what? Sigma square. And then as we have seen in equation 12, and then we consider we rewrite our sigma square in terms of the as we have seen in equation four so <laughs> we have already seen our a transpose a in our previous slide so let's now move ahead and we are familiar we are we have seen this equation when we are finding the determinant when we are finding the determinant of the matrix so to find our v, first of all, we say we consider the case where our lambda is equal to 9. And then if our lambda is equal to 9, we have we are able to we'll get this matrix, this 2 by 2 matrix here. We perform rule reduction to give us what equation 16. So rule reduction, we know row 2 is the scalar multiple of row 1, so it goes to 0 eventually. And then we form an equation from with this one, which we the whole idea is from the Kalhemetis principle. So we we are able to express this one in terms of this equation 17, which minus x plus for 2y equal to 0. So from here we can re-express this one as minus 2 minus x equal to what minus 2y. <coughs> so which we have one free variable. So we if our one so we say when y, y is equal to what 1, if I want y is equal to 1, then we'll be getting x to be equal to what 2, as we have seen as our first eigenvector. Then we now go ahead to look at what the case when our lambda is equal to 4, 
We also obtain this two by two matrix as we have seen here, perform row reduction. We swap the rows. So in swapping the rows, row two becomes row one and row two, be uh, row one becomes row two, row two. And as we, we can see from here, it's also row two then becomes also a scalar multiple of row one. So without spending much time, it runs to zero. And we also form an equation with um, the first row in equation 19. So <clears throat> from here, if when it comes to equation 20, this one can be so also be expressed as what 2x equal to minus y, which we choose our minus to, um, our y to be negative 2. If our y is negative 2, then finally we'll be getting what our x to be equal to 1, as we have seen as our second adjunct vector for the lambda equal to what 4. So from there, we all the adjunct vectors, we say, okay, let's give them a nice matrix as our z. So we have our z to be the first adjunct vector and second column to be what? The second column to be the second adjunct vector. Then we then normalize each of the columns of z to get our, our v. Yeah. And from that, we, we, we were able to get our v. So now we still want to go ahead to find our u. And our u, we are expecting to have our two column vectors. Two column vectors. So <clears throat> we have seen our u a also expressed here. And then we are, we are saying that from here we have to get our u1 and u2. And to get our u1, u1 also must have something to do with our first singular value and our the first column of the of our v as we have seen here so times the a or we we are able to come to equation 13 from equation 21 equation 23 from equation 21 when we post multiply our v our v our matrix by what v so then we were able to get equation 23 and when you come to equation 24 you two also have something to do with a second singular value and <clears throat> our second origin vector from V. From V. So, like we have seen it, so we have one over the first singular value times our matrix A times our first, our first autonomous vector from v from v and then it gives us we were able to we were able to get our v u1 sorry and then the same thing applies to u2 we also doing the multiplication we are able to get equation we are able to get what our u2 here so Finally, finally, this is our u1, this is our u2, as we have, we have, we then give them the, uh, we then place it at the right place, uh, we then place them in the right position in the u matrix, as we have seen here, and we use our, our diagonal matrix, which is what a sigma, and then we're supposed to have our v transpose, but the transpose of the v will still be the same as the original v matrix. So if multiplying, these three mat matrices here will give us back our original A matrix. We have come to the end of this lesson and I believe this video is so simple, it's so helpful and I would like you to please like, subscribe, share this video across and then, uh, leave your comments down below. I'll be more interested to get more comments, more likes and more uh, please don't just uh, don't, don't don't just watch, but try as much as possible to also subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you.